Good day and welcome to this uh, webinar um, called the Global Data Center Operations Standards and Guidelines. Um, thank you for the e attendance uh, of this uh, particular webinar. Um, I hope you will find it very useful uh, today. Uh, before we start, just a bit of logistics. Um, for those of you who have logged on, double check whether you have set your microphone to mute so that uh, your audio is not uh, disturbing the rest of the uh, conference for the others. Um, secondly, we will have uh, two polling questions uh, in this webinar. So what will happen is uh, at the time of the polling, you will get a pop-up screen where you can uh, click for your answers and then we'll uh, collect the data and uh, share it uh, with, uh, with the group. Of course, it will be anonymous, so uh, nobody will know what you have uh, voted. So again, uh, welcome. Let's have a quick look at the agenda for today. Um, first of all, we would like to spend a, a three, four slides uh, talking about uh, EPI for those of you who are not so familiar with us uh, yet. Um, and then we would like to talk about the importance of the, the data center operations in the bigger scheme of things within the data center itself. We'll give you some comparisons of the current standards and guidelines that are available in this particular space. And we will then drill down a little bit more into one specific one, which is the DCOS. And um, in addition to that, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what normally would be the process and outcome if you would go for an audit. And then we'll do the summary and we'll have some time for questions and answers. It should all in all take about uh, about half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, maybe an hour, uh, depending on the questions and answers. So without further ado, let's have a quick look at uh, the first part, uh, who is EPI? Um, basically, we are a, a company originating from the UK. We started in 87. So this is a bit of a special year for us because we are celebrating our 30th year anniversary. Uh, we are representing, uh, represented in basically every uh, continent. We have nine offices worldwide uh, covering uh, all the way from Canada, US, Latin America, Europe, Middle East, and of course, Asia Pacific. Uh, EPI is very focused on basically three service offerings. We do design evaluation and validation. This is for those that would like to build a data center and make sure that whatever is on the design drawings will be meeting the business requirements as well as the standard chosen. We do the audit and certification of data centers. That is what we do at two levels. The physical layer, so the data center construction site itself, with all the infrastructure inside, uh, mechanical systems, electrical systems, telecommunications, etc., cetera, um, as well as the process uh, and operations layer. And we uh, do professional data center and IT training. If you'd like to hear more about uh, the offerings, then please visit our website at www.api.ap.com. We also are very well uh, uh, represented in the industry in terms of uh, uh, the various awards as well as publications uh, which uh, have been coming out in the various magazines like Forbes, uh, uh, American Business Journal and others. So quite a few customers uh, that we work with uh, across the board. We have customers in all kinds of segments, financial, co-locations, enterprise, uh, small data centers, large data centers. Uh, local versus global data centers, et cetera. So that was just a very quick introduction on EPI. Um, so let's go to the, uh, the key part of the presentation, the importance of data center operations. Well, normally when we look at data centers and we talk to data center operator owners, um, typically when people talk about data centers, they first starting off talking about their physical infrastructure. Uh, how big their UPS is, how great that generator is, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what we have done in EPI, we've put a framework together uh, showing data center operator owners that, uh, or showing data center operator owners all the important parts of a data center. Now, the blocks that you see here blued out um, are the physical parts, so the IT infrastructure, uh, the site location of a data center, as well as the physical infrastructure of a data center. And as you can see, those are, relatively speaking, small portions of the overall data center itself. As you can see in this particular picture, 
there are many, many uh, processor-related matters uh, that you need to have under management control in order to be able to run and operate a data center efficiently. Now, this is also uh, uh, some market research that shows you what the reasons are why data centers go down. And obviously, as you can see here, we have to deal with the traditional mechanical failures, as we call it, uh, the hardware that might fail. Uh, this could be IT related, or it could be the physical uh, infrastructure that is supporting the IT hardware, being electrical systems, mechanical systems, and so forth. But as you can see in this chart as well, a very large portion is attributed to the human error, things that you and I do wrong. This could be, of course, a variety of things. It could be the traditional oopsie, a small mistake, but uh, nowadays a small mistake could have major consequences, as well as things that go wrong purely because processes are not aligned or are not well managed. So why would you optimize data center operations? Well, as you have seen in the previous slides, uh, big you know, issues could happen due to human management or human errors, I would say. So no matter how well your data center is designed and built, uh, typically we talk about tier four or rated four, et cetera, um, the data center can still have major failures if you don't manage it correctly. Yeah, compare it to a beautiful car uh, with a very bad driver. So having fully integrated management processes yeah, will ultimately help you to minimize the risk, uh, minimize the chance of you having a failure or downtime into your data center. And of course, by being well organized, you automatically will introduce better efficiency within your organization. So in that sense, uh, we need to make sure that we have uh, great uh, you know, process control. Now, obviously, processes can be over-engineered. Uh, can be under-engineered, so we need to make sure that we align them well with the business outcomes so that people are motivated. Uh, over-engineered processes will only lead to demotivation of people, and they might even just forgo following the process. So why are processes so important? Well, I think the best way to show you is what is happening in the airline industry. Here you see some uh, data that was collected from IATA. IATA is an organization that uh, keeps an eye on all the airlines uh, worldwide. And they have some statistics regarding accidents. Now here you see it, uh, the statistics over a five-year time frame from the, com the comparison between 2009 and 2014. And as you can see, the number of flights has dramatically uh, increased, uh, 15%, where actually the number of people carried you know, went over 35% in growth, and that obviously was because of different loading factors, uh, larger aircrafts like A380, et cetera, that came into play. Total accidents dropped almost 20%, and fatal accidents, i.e. Uh, hull loss, et cetera, dropped 33%. Now, without a shadow of doubt, this is attributed partly to the uh, you know, better engineering that is uh, continuously improving the uh, uh, the aircraft itself, but a large portion is attributed to the uh, process control that they have in the airline industry. No matter how many times a particular pilot has flown the same route with the same aircraft, they do the same thing over and over again. They follow the checklist. It's not like I have flown this route 100,000 times already, so I'll just do it out of my head. No, they follow a very strict procedure and checklist. So that has helped the industry to become better and better uh, from a safety point of view. The reality, though, of data centers is slightly different. Now, unfortunately, in many data centers, there are many what we call silos. Yeah? We are still uh, operating you know, in different departments. The facilities do not always like to talk to the IT folks. The IT folks have sometimes issues talking to the business people, etc. And because of everybody just doing their own thing and try to interact maybe as least as possible with the others, yeah, it could lead to all kinds of issues within data centers. Yeah. Sometimes what we have seen in our research is that commitment of the customers and whether that customer is external like in a commercial data center or internal in a traditional enterprise data centers is not always very well managed. We've seen occasions where in a particular bank, the uptime uh, percentage that was promised to their branch officers was 99.x, uh, 
And if we looked at, say, the contract they had with the telcos, et cetera, they were far below that particular threshold. So how can you promise, for example, 99.9 .9 if your telco only promise you 99.5? This is obviously a mismatch and that needs to be managed. So either the expectations need to be set right or commitments should not be done. So in that sense, uh, we see that there is a lot of uh, improvements that need to be made. Also in the process itself, if you look at some of the key processes in the data center, like capacity planning, uh, a process like what we call truck to rack, so the offloading of equipment all the way to staging and actually getting it uh, running 24 by 7 uh, typically has issues, as well as things like shift handover, safety regulations, document management, etc. So the fact is that a lot of data centers, there's a lot of fighting or fires, so to speak. They are either due to poor planning, uh, not having enough resources, uh, issues with cross budgetary uh, uh, policies i.e. the facilities do not want to invest in certain infrastructure because the IT came up with new uh, you know, ideas of uh, new equipment that is actually uh, not originally fitting the, the Z data center design. So quite a lot of issues that we need to deal with in the traditional data centers. A lot of data centers also wonder, you know, what are the key processes that we need to have in place? Yeah, what is too much, what is too little? Things like, to what level of detail should those processes be described? Because as I said, if you don't describe it at the right level, you could be missing out some fundamental key things. And if you over describe them, so to speak, over engineer them, as we normally uh, say, that could also lead to all kinds of issues where people start ignoring the process because they think it's just way too cumbersome, way too troubling to go through all those checklists and do the right thing. So in the end of the day, a lot of data centers are struggling with understanding what the right control mechanisms are. Uh, do we need to have it controlled? Do we need to automate those processes? And if so, to what level? And unfortunately, until today, there was not really you know, a standard available or a guideline that could help data centers by uh, giving them a reference point. So let's have a look at uh, a poll question here. I'm gonna open up the poll window, okay? And the poll window will ask you, it will pop up on your screen, and we would like to check with you what do you consider to be your biggest challenge in managing your data center operations. And here you see four options, um, resource constraints, i.e. you have a shortage of money or people in the organizations to get everything done correctly. Uh, the organization is still mainly operating uh, in this silo, so department uh, type of fashion. Um, you don't have a clear reference point, you know, in terms of what is uh, considered to be appropriate. So you don't really actually know what is the right thing to do and what is not the right thing to do. And, you know, maybe legacy issues. Yeah, you're working in the data center, you would like to change things, but it's just uh, very hard uh, to get it through the organization because of, uh, call it historical uh, reasons. So just doing a poll at this moment, um, if you could uh, click what you think uh, is appropriate uh, in your environment. I'll uh, give it a few seconds. So if you could uh, choose one or multiple of the challenges that you are facing, the, that will be, will be great. So I'm seeing the polls. I see various things coming in at the moment in terms of answers. Okay, let's have a see if you people have not answered yet. Okay, all right, well, I'm going to close. So if you could uh, click uh, a few people well, that have not answered yet. Great, well, let's uh, close the poll. So lock in your vote right now, as they would say it. Okay, I'm going to close the poll because almost everybody has given an answer. Okay, closing. All right, well, there are a few people that talk about resource constraints and the organization uh, issues in terms of, uh, you know, having this silo effect, but the majority, actually, 38%, uh, uh, according to the statistics collected here, uh, they say that they have no clear reference uh, point. Um, uh, the legal uh, legacy issues also tend to be a problem here, about 13% say, that you know they have to deal with the traditional things 
that are always uh, happening uh, in the data center and it's just hard to change the organization. So that is uh, quite an interesting uh, statistics, I would, uh, I would say. So let's have a look at uh, what your options are. If you would like to benchmark your operations uh, as you have them right now. Well, there are a few things that we need to consider, of course, if we are going to do benchmarking. Yeah, and this is the definition of benchmarking. It's having a standard of excellence or achievement against which you are going to reference yourself. In other words, you must have a baseline yeah, in order to be able to benchmark yourself. And as we discussed before, that is pretty tough uh, as it was in the industry today. So what makes a very good standard? Well, first of all, you would like to make sure that the, st the, the standard itself is transparent. Now we want to make sure that you understand how it has been developed. Uh, was it done by one person sitting in the corner? Uh, was it developed by using uh, other people in the industry? So it went through you know, proper technical vetting and checking what is the reality of today's world. Um, do we have access to the requirements? Uh, I hear sometimes people talking about we have a standard, but they don't tell you all the requirements. Yeah, things like it's outcome based, we can't give you a checklist, yeah, is often used as a statement. Um, I don't think that's appropriate. You know, if you want to follow a standard, uh, uh, things like, for example, ISO is very good at that. They give you a document and you can read it yourself and, and benchmark yourself. Standards need to be practical. A focused on business outcome, what is the point of having a 100 item checklist if it really doesn't matter, right? We would like to make sure that we have the key things under control that really adds to the business value, like minimizing risk, uh, enhancing uh, flexibility, uh, enhancing efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, of course, the standard should not contradict a local code or regulation because then you will be in serious trouble. So we need to make sure that whatever standard we implement uh, if it's a global standard that it does respect local codes. should be endorsed by the industry. Yeah, so in other words, the industry must be able to influence it uh, so that, again, it should be an open standard and it should be used by the industry. And of course, you need to have proper access to consultants and auditors. So at least you have some freedom of choice yeah, to make it more cost effective. So let's have a look at the comparison. Yeah, um, these are, uh, you know, four um, standards slash guidelines that are uh, available in the market uh, today. Okay, um, there are some other organizations that are working on a variety of things, but these are the key ones uh, that uh, float around. Uh, MNO, uh, Maintenance and Operations Stamp of Approval, um, the DCOS, the EN 5600, although I must uh, tell you here that the 5600 um, is available uh, pretty much for the physical infrastructure. The maintenance and operations part is still not out in the market yet, it's just being worked on. And TIMS, the Tate Infrastructure Maintenance Standard. So let's have a look at the uh, variety of uh, options here and what they are at the detailed level. The development process, as you can see that uh, MNO, uh, which is uh, out uh, from Uptime, and TIMS, which is uh, now under Schneider, it used to be lead technologies. Uh, they have a proprietary development process. Um, DCOS is developed following the NC and ISO procedures and EN 5600 is following the EN standard uh, development. The criteria availability, um, well, for only DCOS is fully available. Uh, it's downloadable and therefore you can read the details yourself. Uh, the others, either EN is not available yet, and MNO as well as TIMS, there is only a high-level paper available with some checklist, but it's not really in the details. ISO alignment, I think this is a very important one, because if your standard is not aligned with ISO, then you might end up in all kinds of troubles and issues when you are going for ISO. So, for example, a lot of data centers uh, have ISO 27001, which is uh, related to uh, security. And if you have a uh, ISO 27001 compliant data center, or you are thinking about this for the future, and your current operations guideline or standard is not aligned with ISO, you will end up in contradictory issues, uh, which you know, uh, you know, create trouble, of course, from a process point of view. Um, MNO not aligned to ISO, TIMS not aligned to ISO, 
the end is uh, unclear at the moment. Uh, DCUS is fully aligned uh, with ISO. Conformity levels, that's an interesting part. Um, uh, quite a few, as you see here, have the uh, pass-fail scenario. Either you do it all or you do it uh, or you don't do it. Uh, some of them have some variation in it where they say, for example, as long as you uh, address 80% or you get 80% of the points uh, out of the 100, then we consider it to be a pass. Uh, some uh, are basically going for the all or nothing game. Uh, DGS has five levels of maturity. Uh, TIMS have four. The conformity baseline, so what makes you pass or fail? Well, for MNO, it is proprietary. Uh, it's not really overly clear. Um, although there are some sources that it works on an 80 out of 100 uh, point system. Um, for DCUS, it's ISO aligned, um, so the ISO level of maturity. Uh, EN proprietary and TIMS proprietary again with no real details available at this moment. Partial audit. Um, this will be very important for you if you run a data center. And the reason is that sometimes it's very hard for you from an operations point of view to get it all done. You can imagine if uh, you would close an audit and the auditor says, well, I would like to have a look at your financial systems uh, that you as a data center operations manager have to go upstairs and ask the finance manager to open up their system uh, to show the auditor, uh, you probably won't be very successful. So having uh, audits that can do be partial on your operations, for example, you only want to review your maintenance, uh, that will be very helpful to start small and uh, expand your scope of the audit as you go along, right? Um, unfortunately, all of them have, uh, don't have that capability apart from DCUS, uh, has the capability to select the disciplines that you feel are important. Certified data centers, MNO, yes, uh, DCUS, yes, uh, EN, no, because it's not out yet. And for TIMS, it's not really certification. There are data centers that went through a TIMS assessment, but it's not really in a fully accredited uh, style uh, of an assessment. Uh, from the auditing point of view, uh, for MNO, you're basically uh, uh, tied to uptime. They are the only ones that uh, are performing that, so you don't have a lot of choice, um, either from a technical perspective as well as from a commercial perspective. Uh, DCUS are multiple organizations that can do it, uh, and for EN, uh, there is uh, nothing available yet, and TIMS, there are some people that are doing this, but again, it's not an official audit. So from a technical point of view, yeah, what is actually covered? Now, even yeah, uh, as we have tried to summarize it here in a couple of disciplines, um, even in a discipline like, for example, SLA, service level management, there is a great variety in terms of how it's being approached by the variety of parties here. Um, again, what we have tried to do here is uh, lift it up to the high level disciplines that we talk, typically talk about, uh, such as data and operations, uh, maintenance, uh, governance, risk management, etc. And as you can see, uh, you know, each of them pretty much have some gaps, either they don't address it at all or they only address it partially. And even if you look at, say, operations, which is basically covered by pretty much uh, all of them in detail, uh, the approach could be still quite different. So you really have to look at the details in order to see whether uh, it is matching your business requirements. So in terms of the maturity assessment, I quickly touched upon it where I said some are going for a pass-fail, some are going for different rating levels, so to speak. Um, uh, you need to really look at, say, what makes sense. Um, if you look at, say, the pass-fail racing, yeah, is it impartial? Well, typically not, because normally the rating levels are defined in a proprietary way. In other words, the organization makes up a scheme where, which determines whether you pass or fail. And if you don't have those criteria, it will be pretty hard for you to determine you know, whether it's right or wrong. To give you a quick example, for some people, security might be more important than safety. Other organizations feel that safety is more important than security. Uh, the debate here is not about what is right or wrong, but the fact is that different organizations put a different weight factor on what they believe is important to them. And in the past sales scenario measurement system, that doesn't come to the surface. Um, in the ISO maturity level, yeah, uh, it is clearly defined what uh, uh, you know, each level means. 
and we have displayed it here on the slide below. Uh, ISO defines five levels. Basically, they say uh, we have an initial uh, situation. Uh, basically, as you can see here, there is pretty much nothing going on. It's all run by luck, as we sometimes call it. Um, there are also things in terms of uh, the level five, which means that you have a fully integrated process management system across all the disciplines of the organization, which is, of course, very hard to get. Um, clarity on the levels. Again, for pass-fail, it really depends on the transparency of the system. Yeah, if it's clear that what you need to do in order to pass, then it makes it simple, uh, but not all of these systems are there. Um, in an ISO scheme, of course, it's pretty clear because it tells you exactly what you need to do. And the other key thing I think that is important is progressive improvement. What do we mean by that? Um, various research by Carnegie Mellon University and some others have indicated that it is almost impossible to go from level one to level five. Yeah, you cannot jump from being completely undocumented, untrained people, you don't do monitoring, and suddenly the next morning you wake up and you have a fully integrated management process. Yeah, research has proven that you have to go bit by bit. So you go from level one to two, three, and so forth. Now, if you have a, a pass or fail system, you are bound to be able to do everything in one go, right? You cannot say we do improvement over time because you have limits in resources or whether it's money or organization resources, etc. Uh, in ISO, that is possible because you can go from level one to level two as and when you are ready. Yeah. When you have other systems, uh, the proprietary system where people talk about gold and silver and star, that is typically there as well. But the problem with the uh, gold, silver, and star style of rating is nobody actually really knows what it, what it really means. So the question I get a lot is, you know, but what about ISO? Because ISO has quite a lot of standards available. Yeah, so can I use that one? Well, the key thing to understand with ISO is, of course, they are good standards, but first of all, they do not always address all the disciplines and domains that we have in the data center. Uh, I have not seen a ISO standard that talks about how to maintain equipment. I have not seen any ISO standard that talks about how to do floor management and capacity planning in a data center. So, yes, there are standards available, but again, they're not always written uh, either for a discipline that we have, or they are not really specifically written for a data center operations. Yeah? Let's have a look again at ISO 27001, which is addressing security. Well, it doesn't tell you how to go about entry control of your visitors. Do you give them a pass or do you not give them a pass? Do you ask them for an ID or you not give them the, ask them for an ID? All these things in ISO are not described. They merely go from an extreme high level saying that you must have entry control. How you do entry control, whether you put a guy with a big uh, gun at the entry door uh, to control visitors or whether you ask people to hand over their passport, etc., yeah, is really up to you. So, because of that unclarity, yeah, it's not always that practical. It also drives up the cost because you will need to get, you know, consultants in that will tell you how to implement your security, for example, in ISO 27001, yeah, for your data center to make sure that you could pass the audit. That also means that, you know, different consultants, different uh, visions, in other words, a data center A cannot always be compared to data center B, although they both might have a ISO certificate, yeah, it still doesn't mean they are executing processes in a similar fashion. So in that sense, ISO does have value, of course, we're not debating this, but you know, it's pretty tough and it has a lot of pitfalls. So let's uh, drill down a little bit more on one of the uh, items uh, that we uh, compared everybody with, uh, that is the DCUS. What is the philosophy behind the DCUS? Well, the DCUS basically looked at the uh, framework for a data center. And what we have done, basically, we've taken out the items that are really physical, i.e. the data center location and the physical infrastructure, but that's already covered in standards like the TIA 942. Uh, the IT infrastructure we've taken out because, again, it's a physical component. It's not a process component. And frankly speaking, in IT infrastructure, there is no standard available. And the ICT service management, so this is typically covered by ITIL, or the ISO 20000 standard. But all the other processes that you can see here yeah, are covered in the DCOS. 
So the intent of the DCUS when it was written was really aimed at looking at, you know, a data center investor owner or an operator, you know, whether it's a commercial data center or an enterprise data center, and making sure that they have a progressive approach uh, to the improvement of a data center. Again, we do understand that data centers cannot grow from unmanaged all the way to fully fledged integrated managed, right? We also clearly look at that it has to be practical, that it has to lead to risk reduction and increased uh, efficiency, and that it must respect the local uh, code as well as you know some of the regulations in the industry. So all in all, uh, uh, the aim was to provide a flexible framework uh, that could be adapted to organizations as their business needs was there. It is uh, fully uh, developed uh, basically uh, following the NC and ISO style uh, type of uh, setup um, and it has been reviewed by a variety of organizations uh, in the industry uh, coming from different disciplines, uh, commercial and non-commercial sites, um, government related sites, etc. as well as different complexity. So DCS is really the first and only complete standard available in the market addressing all the 11 uh, operational disciplines that are uh, related to data centers. Uh, where you talk about service level management, organization management, uh, safety, security, project management, facilities, data center operations, environmental sustainability, monitoring control, organizational resilience, as well as all the governance risk and compliance. So it's really a very comprehensive set of uh, processes that you can uh, leverage from. Now, as you can imagine, each of those disciplines, for example, service level management, yeah, has also the variety of sub-disciplines. Because you can imagine if I want to do service level management, I need to do a lot of things like needs analysis of my customers, I need to look at their business requirements, their support requirements, et cetera, et cetera. So what you will find in the DCOS is that for all items, uh, for all those disciplines, there is a, a very good sub-description of all the things that you need to do to satisfy that particular process management. DC operations uh, maturity is measured following the ISO model. And here you see a quick description of the various models. Uh, level one, basically, yeah, I always call it run by luck. It's really initial. There is very little or no documentation available. Uh, monitoring is not really done to a full proper uh, extent. Uh, training not really there. People do it a bit on the job uh, and very little process control. Most of it is in people's heads. Level two, at least it's repeatable, but uh, basically it all depends on your people, how well they are sticking to their own process that they have defined in their head. Level three, now we have all the documentation ready. Yeah, people are following the documentation, so now we have a clearly repeatable and defined uh, process uh, that everybody sticks to. Level four, this basically means where you have all the processes under full management control and you do the continuous improvement. In other words, at least once a year, you review all your processes to see whether it's still meeting the business needs. Uh, maybe you can cut down on some of the processes because they are over-engineered. Maybe you need to enhance some processes to basically meet the new uh, regulations or new business requirements. And then we have the toughest one, which is level five. And level five means that all the processes are integrated. To give an example how that works, it would mean that if the IT department or your external customer, uh, when they are going to roll out new IT environments, they would actually talk with the DC operations and facilities people to say, can we actually do it? Is there any additional cost that we need to absorb, et cetera, et cetera. So now you are talking about a well-oiled data center machine, so to speak. Now let's have a look again at a poll. Um, I just explained to you the variety of uh, maturity models. And I'm going to bring up another poll on your screen. And the question we'd like to ask you here is what level of maturity do you feel that your data center is at? Is it at level one? In other words, it's initial, you know, you're basically running your daily operations, but it's kind of like, you know, left and right. Um, B, it's repeatable. We have documentation, but still we are not always following it so strictly. Uh, we're doing it kind of like as we speak, but a lot depends on the people. Uh, level C, 
uh, process control. So we have all the processes documented and we are following it really strictly. Uh, D, we are having all the processes, we're following it and every process is you know, reviewed on a yearly basis to make sure that we improve it. And then we have E, the optimized one where basically uh, everybody in the organization is working nicely together. So there is never a chance where uh, the IT folks are throwing something over to the operations guys and say, good luck, uh, Monday it needs to be running. So let's have a look at the polls. Um, it's open now, so if you could uh, uh, put in your uh, vote, please. Okay, you uh, lock in your votes. Okay, the votes are coming in. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Well, if I look at here, the polls are coming in. Still, a number of people have not answered. If you could uh, quickly uh, say what your levels are, that will be appreciated. Again, all your votes are completely anonymous, so don't worry. We're not going to you know, tell everybody where you are. Okay. Well, the majority um, of the polls, uh, okay, we're still seeing some people voting. Okay, if you could log in your vote now, that would be nice. Okay, okay, I'm going to close the, the poll. Okay, let's have a look at the results. Uh, the majority of the people here, uh, more than 40% say that they are at a repeatable level. A few people are talking about a level three. So most people seem to be at the, uh, you know, we have some documentation, we're not always following it. Um, there are a few people that says we have a managed process. In other words, you know, we have everything under control and we are also looking at the future. And a few people say they have a fully integrated management process. Now that one uh, is always the most toughest one because that means there is never an issue in your organization. Nothing is unplanned. And everything works very nicely. And that, you know, if you have really achieved that, that will be an absolute top uh, performing data center. So well done for that. So let's continue. So what is the best maturity? Well, not a, not a real guess, of course. Yeah, the best uh, maturity level is, of course, level five. Uh, but, you know, this is also the hardest to get. And as we said, uh, you can't jump from level one all into level five immediately. It will be a progressive approach. Now let's have a look at uh, some of the details of DCOS. Um, in DCOS, uh, all of the disciplines that I have mentioned are fully described. Here is just a quick screenshot of one of them, uh, in this case, facility maintenance. And as you can see, it is very well structured where it addresses all the parts that you need to think of, right? like uh, the policies, uh, procedures, in this case, we talk about things like maintenance agreements, schedule, operational procedures, et cetera, et cetera. Each of those sections yeah, is very well written from an almost checklist point of view. So this is not a typical ISO standard that says, thou shalt do this X, Y, Z, and then it leaves it up to you how to implement it. No, in DCS, it clearly describes step for step what are the key things that you need to look at? Of course, you can always add more, right? Um, if you feel that you know there is more details that you want to add, you can always do that. Uh, it makes the things better, but this is really the minimum set. And as you can see, it's very practical. So here we talk about, say, post-installation of an IT. Uh, what do you do? Uh, is it properly mounted? So is all the cabling properly done? Yeah, connection is all there. Is everything labeled, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can see, very, very practical. The document also has the maintenance checklist. Um, we heard a lot of good news uh, about this from customers where they say this part alone is well worth the whole document. Because in the appendix in the back of the DCOS, it describes for each and every facility equipment, whether we're talking about a monitoring panel or a big ticket item like a generator or a chiller, it gives you a good guidance in terms of what are the daily things you need to do monthly, quarterly, annually, et cetera. Yeah, so again, uh, you can use this to basically validate your own maintenance cycles uh, or those uh, that are laid down by your vendor. 
So all in all, D shares is really great value. Uh, this is one of the uh, key things uh, a uh, senior data, uh, data center consultant uh, told us. He said, you know, most data centers, you know, they knew they had issues. Yeah, they knew they were lost. But now with the DCOS, they finally know where they were lost. So now finally they have a reference point and they can check themselves to see, you know, what is missing in their operational procedures and policies. So I think that is a, a very nice summary uh, because I think uh, coming from a data center background, we all know that we have issues somewhere, somehow. Some we know, some we don't know. And having a guideline, of course, helps you big time. So that was a bit more detail on the DCUS. So let's jump in a little bit more. Uh, if you would like to have, uh, you know, a validation of your data center operations, how to go about it. So uh, whether you do it as an assessment or a formal audit, the process is typically uh, similar. So we have all the initial parts of an audit where you get all the paperwork sorted out. Then you need to prepare for the audit. That means you need to start making sure that all your documentation uh, is collected and in the right place. Um, obviously, you will get a report then that says you might miss a few procedures, et cetera, et cetera, or some documents are not submitted. The documents will be reviewed, and then there will be an on-site audit where basically uh, the auditor will look at the audit evidence. Again, this is pretty much following the usual uh, ISO-style type of audit. Then you will get a report that gives you the gap analysis of where you might want to brush up your operations. You can do the corrective actions then to implement those. And then basically you will get a certificate uh, to prove that the things are at the uh, level that you wish to target. And then of course you need to maintain the certificate. Now, as we discussed before, uh, DCUS allows you two important parts. First of all, it allows you to select the those disciplines that you feel are most important to you. So when you do an audit, you don't need to do all 11 disciplines. You can basically pick and choose what you feel is important. So you might say, let's start with maintenance first. And when that is at a particular maturity level that I feel is important, for example, you target yourself to be at level three, you could say we are at maintenance, uh, we are at level two, let's fix that first so we are at level three. Now I want to start adding operational management and I want to see where I am and I want to bring that to level three at least as well. So it gives you the building blocks to basically improve over time. And again, I think that is a great advantage because we all know that we have many things to do and we cannot do everything at once. Now, if you do an audit, normally you get these uh, fancy graphs. This is a spider chart, so to speak. Uh, in this case, it was for an audit carried out over all 11 disciplines. And again, uh, you don't have to do that. And here the senior management could clearly see that they had a major issue in certain areas like governance, organizational resilience, operations uh, was uh, you know, uh, reasonable, but still not at the target. Now for each of those disciplines, you will also get a spider chart that drills down on the detailed level. So in this case, for example, service level management, yeah, uh, it gives you a clear picture as a manager uh, or as operations staff what the areas are that you're lacking. So clearly in this example, you can see that the organization didn't do a proper job at needs analysis, uh, didn't have a proper service catalog in place, so people had no idea what the capabilities were uh, of this particular data center. Uh, so this is really helpful uh, to quickly zoom in on your key uh, challenges and what you would like to do with it. So from there, of course, you can develop your improvement plans and again, make them realistic. Uh, one of the key things we see in uh, audits that some people again want to jump from level two to level four, and that is just not possible. Yeah, take it gradually because if you set the bar too high, typically it means it will take too long to get it all fixed and your staff might get really frustrated uh, to not be able to reach a particular level uh, over the next two years, so to speak. So do it in bits and bytes. Uh, add steps as you go. Uh, celebrate the success, yeah, because that is very important in, in the team. And then you will be able to get a certificate of conformity, yeah, and that will also go together with a stamp of approval, which you can use in your communication with your customers if you feel you would like to do so. So here is your data center operations action plan. 
Yeah, um, what I would like to suggest is uh, just take a Sunday afternoon and read the, the CEOS. It's about 140 pages, including all the intros, etc. Uh, just read through it to get an idea of the big picture. Yeah. Then determine what disciplines you feel are the most important for you uh, to pay attention to. Uh, do a gap analysis. You can do that yourself, of course. You can read the book and see where you are or you could get external help from uh, assessment planners or auditors. Prepare a realistic action plan and again, you know, celebrate the success. So in summary, yeah, DCUS A is very practical and it's very, very complete. It's the only complete document in the industry today. It's adaptable and flexible. It allows you to choose what you feel is important so you can start small and grow whatever your business can handle and what your business requirements are. It's ISO aligned, very important in my view, especially if you are already having ISO certificates or if you are looking at ISO certification. Um, if you go for DCUS first, you will find out that it's much more easier to get your ISO certification done. If you have already ISO certification, then it will be much more easier to do DCUS again because they are fully aligned. So in that sense, it's a great help. ISO maturity. Again, you know, it's not a do it all or fail. This allows you to have a slow progression depending on the maturity requirements of the organization that you put onto it as a target. And, you know, I think uh, DCUS clearly is an industry choice. Uh, there's a red uh, adoption rate. Uh, quite a lot of data centers are now requesting for getting audited for DCUS. Um, the document itself, DCUS, has been downloaded well over 2,000 times, which is by any measure of standard. Uh, very, very large, and we have, you know, received great feedback on it. If you need more information about DCS, uh, simply go to our website. Uh, you can have a look at it there. Um, just go to the main uh, page, uh, www.epi-ap.com, or uh, where you can find on the bottom right uh, selection boxes, and there you will find the EPI DCS standards, or you can go straight to the page itself, slash DCS, uh, you will find more information about the DCUS itself. Um, if you would like to do an audit, there is a brochure there that can tell you all about it. And there is also the table of contents and some example pages out of the DCUS so that you can have a good view on what it all entails. Um, that is basically what I would have for today. Um, so now we can open it up uh, to the floor. So if you have a question, uh, go to the chat window and type your question. Um, and I'll uh, read it out then to the participants uh, so that they can have a view. Um, if you have a tablet, then you probably have to tap in the top of your tablet to bring up the menus. And then you can click on the chat location and then we can, you know, answer it from there. Well, so thank you uh, for the presentation. It was very useful. Thank you very much. Um, there is a question. Could we get the slides? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, what we will do, uh, we will uh, get the PDF uh, version up uh, to those uh, who were registered for this particular session. See. Okay, another question. Uh, uh, compared to MNO uh, and DCUS, uh, which one is older? Um, I guess which one is older? You're not talking about me, but I guess you're talking about the standard or the guideline. Uh, MNO is a little bit older. Uh, they have been around uh, for a couple of years. Um, DCUS has been officially released uh, last year, so in that sense, it's younger. Um, although the adoption rate, what we see, is, is very high um, in, in the DCUS. Uh, again, uh, the number of downloads uh, is attributing uh, to that, as well as we see more and more people going for DCUS. Um, another question in terms of uh, how much is the certified DCUS and uptime in terms of percentage. Um, I don't have that number uh, with me. Um, I, uh, if you look at, say, uptime, uh, they do have uh, a number of sites that are certified. Um, but 
uh, one of the key things you need to look at is that they have, for example, one customer that has multiple sites. So, for example, there is one uh, large customer that uh, they have, uh, which has locations around the world. And therefore, it looks like as if they have done a lot of data centers, but it's actually, uh, you know, one customer. Um, but uh, Uptime has a, a more sites at this particular moment, uh, simply because they started earlier. Uh, but if you look at, say, the adoption rate in terms of new data centers that are coming on board to adopt these US, uh, that rate is higher for these US uh, compared to Uptime. The question in terms of auditors, uh, again, the question uptime versus DCUS, uh, it seems that this is the comparison. Um, uptime is basically only, uh, you know, doing their own thing. In other words, you do not have the freedom to choose other organizations to do the audit uh, for you. In fact, uh, that is, you know, uh, restricting you, of course, in terms of choice. Now, that could have a commercial repercussion uh, because there is nothing to negotiate. You're stuck with one party. Uh, DCOS is basically uh, certifiable, uh, of course, by EPI, um, and there are new parties coming on board that are performing DCOS certification or DCOS audits, I should say, um, as well. Okay, a very good question. Uh, certification, is it based on the individual data center or could the certificate cover multiple, yeah, more than one data center run by the same team? Okay, that's a very interesting question. Um, I would say the typical answer is it depends. Yeah? If you have multiple data centers and they are working from the same documentation set, so to speak, so from the same process set, then what we would do is we review your documentation, i.e. we review all your paper descriptions of your processor, so to speak, um, but then we would visit the various sites to see how it is implemented. Um, obviously, uh, you could say that the data center is run by the same team, uh, but I'm sure that you know the people that do the security uh, cannot be in three sites at the same time. So uh, how security is physically really executed in site A might be different than in site B purely because people are people and not everybody is following you know, the same procedures as strict as others, so to speak. So, but what it means is that we would do a thorough audit on your process documentation, et cetera, and then we would go to the various sites uh, to do kind of a lightweight check to look at auditors' evidence, as we call it, to see whether the process is really executed. Yeah. So that could be a lot of cost savings uh, because basically, uh, you know, we would have one really thorough audit and then a more uh, lightweight audit, so to speak, because you're only reviewing the evidence in, in other sites. There's a question about cost comparison. Uh, well, that, that's interesting. Costing obviously always varies per site and, and, and you know, uh, 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 region, I would say. Um, in terms of pricing, um, obviously I'm uh, not representing Uptime, uh, nor do I work for them. Uh, the numbers that I've seen floating in the industry um, for their assessment uh, varies from $30,000, $60,000 and above. Those are some of the numbers that I've seen. Uh, DCUS is uh, less than that, uh, typically less than half, uh, sometimes even 30% only. So we have currently a promotion uh, running uh, where people can do a base audit, which covers four disciplines, uh, which is service level uh, management. Obviously, you need to have that typically to understand your customer. Uh, data center operations, which includes for capacity planning, floor management, staging, etc. Maintenance and monitoring and control. So those four disciplines, uh, we have now a promotion running uh, where that is being done for 10,500 USD. So that is uh, very, very uh, cost effective. Um, and this uh, will potentially be cheaper in uh, the certain countries uh, depending on the currency exchange rates. The validity of the certificate. Again, a very, very good question. The validity of the certificate is three years, subject to an annual surveillance audit. So this is following the ISO model again. Uh, if you go for ISO 9000, uh, you basically go for the initial audit, you get your certificate, 
and then you have an annual surveillance audit for the next two years and a recertification for the third year. Now, obviously, from a costing point of view, uh, surveillance audits are uh, relatively uh, cheap. Uh, so recertification, again, will be uh, less. Um, in terms of the charging model, again, there is a question there. Um, it, it varies a little bit per site and the number of disciplines that you have, but in general, just as a quick uh, guidance, normally surveillance audits are somewhere around the 20% of a full-blown audit, uh, a surveillance uh, audit uh, there. A recertification audit varies again, typically around 30 to 40 percent, uh, but again, it depends on the uh, number of domains under scope. In terms of completeness, uh, hold on. the completeness uh, uh, uptime versus DCOS. Um, well, I, I think the best is to refer back to the slide that I showed you before. Um, the MNO is uh, having issues in some areas where it is not covering it uh, you know, either to the full extent or they're not covering it at all. For example, business resilience uh, is not covered, um, uh, other parts like project management is not covered, uh, and there are a variety of other things like risk management, etc., uh, uh, etc., et and some are you know, at a bit more lightweight uh, model. Uh, DCUS is really covering all the 11 disciplines uh, that you can think of yeah, for a uh, data center. Let's see if there's any other question coming in. Okay. Uh, please confirm there's uh, some of the DC operators, uh, uh, such as, and I, I won't uh, you know, mention names here, uh, have DCUS certification. Yes, they are. Um, a, we are in active discussion with some of the very large scale uh, operators. Uh, and B, there are some of the data center operators that have already received uh, DCOS uh, um, uh, certification. Um, I would uh, uh, refer you to our website where we are soon build putting up uh, the names of data centers that have gone through the DCOS. Another uh, good question, how would DCOS have an impact on the design, if any? Well, the DCOS is an operational standard. So theoretically, yeah, theoretically, yeah, basically uh, there is no uh, relationship between the physical implementation and the process. However, there is of course a, uh, a, a link because you can imagine if your physical facility doesn't allow proper uh, safety or security measures, uh, you have no boom barrier, uh, people can just walk into your uh, building and go straight to the computer room area, uh, then technically from a physical point of view you have an issue from security and that would have an impact of course also on your uh, operation. So you can't say, uh, you know, we have entry control, uh, we do a ch exchange of uh, say photo ID versus a badge, etc. because everybody can just walk into your data center and the hello is well accepted and hello back. Great, so it seems that we have run out of the uh, questions here. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for attending. Um, if you have any questions that pop up uh, later in your mind, uh, please feel free to write uh, an email uh, to me. Uh, my name, uh, email is edward at epi-ap.com or you can write to our general emails, uh, sales at epi-ap.com or support. Um, and then we'll take your questions and we'll answer them from there. So with that, I would say thank you again. Have a great evening, great day, great morning, whatever time zone you are located. And we look forward to seeing you again in the next webinars that we will be announcing very soon. Take care and have a great day.